what what we're living through is basically what somebody who's gone through a, a, a psychopathic trauma has gone through. Welcome back to Mind Matters, everyone. I'm Harrison Cayley with Elon Martin. And today we are joined again by David, David Abramowitz. So welcome to the show, David. Thanks so much. Before we start talking, I just want to give a little bit of a, a background to today's episode and a bit of an update too. So I don't know if I've talked about it on the show before yet, but um, last year, Michael Schellenberger who writes the Substack Public, and he was, um, well, if you're not familiar with him, any of our viewers or listeners, then check him out. Check out Public on uh, on Substack, public.substack.com. But in a couple talks last year, Schellenberger basically recommended political ponderology. He said he was reading the book. He and his team were all reading it and obsessed with it and um, so recommended it, which was, uh, you know, I was happy to hear that. And then near the end of the year, um, in October, he published something on his public, on his Substack called Why This One Simple Chart Will End Wokeism. And that's what we're going to be discussing today, but uh, we'll come back to that because since then, Schellenberger and his team at Public have been um, utilizing the insights from Ponderology in a number of articles. So for instance, um, I've got a few of them on my own Substack um, I'll just read some of the headlines. So this one was from a month ago, narcissism and nihilism behind progressive affirmation of psychiatric disorders. Um, another from a month ago, it's time to save sim- civilization from the pathocratic state. And then from a couple weeks ago, elite psychopathology driving Democrats soft coup attempt. So it's been nice to see Schellenberger and his guys, um, yeah, utilizing the insights from Ponderology and bringing it to a wider uh, wider audience. Now, the one that we're going to be talking about is this first one that he put up. So I'm, I'm pretty sure this is the first time that he mentioned Ponderology in print. And this was his, um, his taxonomy of woke psychopathology that he did with Peter Boghossian. And um, again, listeners and viewers might be familiar with Peter's work. He's done, um, he's done work with with James Lindsay and Helen Pluckrose, you know, back in the, back with the, um, what was it called? The, the, dis, uh, the, their whole spoof thing. What do they call it? The, I'm trying to remember the name of it. I don't yeah, recall I it either. Can't remember the name of it. But it was a big, a big story at the time. <laughs> yeah. They, where they basically wrote a bunch of fake, uh, satirical, well, fake papers but- using, using the, like the, the, the social justice language of the time. So, um, you know, on such topics as um, like uh, like overweight bodybuilding and um, just kind of absurd things, and got uh, got the, a lot of these papers published. And so it was a it was a whole uh, a whole to do back a few years ago, and that was on the heels of the um, Br- Brett Weinstein and um, and the whole thing that went down at his university. Um, yeah, so that that all came out of that time period and those events. So we're going to be talking to David today about this chart. And it's not, um, I believe you have to subscribe to public to to view it, but uh, we're going to be discussing it. So uh, I think consider it a, a preview for a, a potential paid subscription to Schellenberger's uh, Substack. So well, with that said, welcome again, David. And uh, yeah, just lead us off. Maybe tell us a bit about this and and why you wanted to discuss it. Thank you. Yes, uh, it, it's an excellent chart because, as uh, as Michael and and Peter uh, say, uh, it's a chart that can hopefully end wokeism and and if not, put put a dent in it. Uh, and it, it's a great taxonomy, and uh, because not only does it show us uh, the various traits that uh, of, of uh, the, the, the psychopathic traits, uh, but also the the various. Uh, in in this case, it's the the uh, tr- discussing the trans uh, racism as well as climate uh, a, a change, and whatever the 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 issues, uh, whatever the issues are, one can trace 
them to the uh, the psychopathic uh, lack of integration, a lack of reality testing. So essentially, this this chart discusses uh, reality testing uh, that that they lack. It discusses uh, splitting, which is one of the, the defenses that we we can discuss, as well as a number of uh, uh, of issues that arise when one does not have a fully formed uh, or a disintegrated psyche. Uh, so having a look at uh, just the uh, the three, if we can put this into three uh, categories or ba ba baskets, so to speak, if we can look at the, uh, the disintegrative issues, the splitting issues and the reality issues, these are the three uh, specific areas that uh, Hervey Cleckley and uh, Otto uh, Kernberg uh, were working on. Uh, they focused specifically on the personality integration, the defenses, as well as reality testing. Unfortunately, in a in a uh, in a draft book that I've been working on, those were the three uh, areas, and each one you can write a book on each each one. Uh, so essentially, if if you do not have a fully formed a psyche, which unfortunately we're looking at today in a world where we have uh, uh, it. it, it extreme absurdities, uh, stupidity, absurdity, which uh, is a sign of psychopathy, uh, and that is uh, all, all around us. And the, 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 the integrate, when you have an integrative state, you, you feel whole, you feel as if you have a purpose, you don't uh, use your power to, uh, to hurt other people, you are grateful, you help people, and you're able to live a life that you can uh, appreciate. When you have a, a, a disintegrated personality, you, you have the opposite. And today, what we are living through today is essentially people who have not had a fully formed personality, and they are living through hatred and fear, and they are projecting the hatred and fear onto the society. Hmm. Uh, uh, it's important to, to note that uh, Melanie Klein, who worked in this area and did uh, a, a incredible work, says that if you do not have a fully formed uh, psyche, then you're going, to, as an adult, you're going to uh, live in a world where splitting is predominant. And we live in a world today where splitting and projection Whereas 50 years ago or 100 years ago, we all project in life, but it's become pathological. And this pathological projection and especially splitting, if I do not have a fully formed psyche and I, I use splitting, I'm only going to be able to see 100% or 0%. There's nothing in between. So today we're living literally in a world where people, because of their negative feelings and their hatred, because they're either on one extreme or on the other extreme, they're always going to be taking the zero uh, extreme, so to speak, because that is the extreme of negativity and, and hatred and of destruction. So when you do not have the ability to, uh, to have any nuance and to to land at twenty or fifty or sixty or seventy percent, whatever we're talking about, then we're always going to be having uh, this uh, zero sum game that essentially is 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 the life of the uh, the, the uh, psychopathic ca character that Labuschewski discusses and that is discussed essentially by by. Uh, of the other uh, uh, folks who have dealt with this, whether it's uh, Adler, who, who is essentially the the uh, so-called father of of individual psych psychology, or Mailer, or it, or all of the other folks from England or America who have discussed this over the years. Hmm. 
Well, David, so let me uh, let me just read some of because you basically divided up these um, these different traits into these three categories. So let right. me just look at. I'll, I'll just read some of them out for uh, right. for listeners. So because you mentioned reality testing and splitting yep. as a as a defense, and then the others right. you're grouping into this um, this notion of of um, of personality integration. I have a comment on that, but uh, but first I just want to give it, give people right. an idea Sorry, of some just, of those. If I just interrupt yeah. you, re, re, reality testing is not a, is not a uh, um, reality testing is is not a defense. Reality right, right. testing just splitting. Is, right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but but for the um, for the the ones under integration, yes. we've got things like lack of empathy, excess of empathy, victim ideology, emotional dysregulation, grandiosity, and attention seeking. So I've just got a right. couple. I've just got a couple comments. So first of all, just for kind of regular listeners, just to kind of clarify, um, like when when we or when I talk about personality integration and disintegration, I'm usually talking about it from the, a specific perspective of like Casimir Dabrowski's work, Correct. which is slightly different. So for, yes. so, so for Dabrowski, like yes. um, any kind of like severe psychopathology would be a form of, of heavy integration. So, and then disintegration, he would just reserve for actual states of like, uh, of, of mental disequilibrium, like in a, a neurotic or a psychotic state. Um, so right. just, that's just a slightly different uses usage of the terminology just so that Correct. just so no one gets confused by our um okay. our use of integration in a slightly right. different manner right. but then with um um just one more comment so i just wanted to give my perspective a bit on on this chart so the way i was kind of seeing it is that um it's kind of a um the, the chart and the the traits that he's talking about are kind of um how would i put it um, well, it's almost like you could have a, a basket of psychopathologies <clears throat> and all of these traits would like apply to, to, to a whole bunch of them. Um, so you can have psychopathy in here, but you can also have like borderline personality or, or, um, or well, maybe any other number of possible, uh, disorders. Yes. Like I know Lobachevsky talks about a lot, right? So for, for instance, with like emotional dysregulation, like dramatic and erratic, um, like psychopaths don't really have a lot of dis, uh, emotional dysregulation in the sense that like a person with borderline personality would with like right. intense emotions, like psychopaths are a bit more cold blooded and cold hearted. So I think right. that, uh, just, just to keep that in mind too, that, uh, when we're talking yes. about the psychopathology here, we won't necessarily always be talking about strictly like psychopathy in right. the sense of like, yep. you know, hair and Cleckley. Um, yes. so I just wanted to, to throw out those, those things yes. in there, sure. but, um, so, so how do you want to get into this? Uh, I know before we were recording, we had you had some ideas that uh, that maybe we'll maybe we'll get into a bit later on, like what the what the actual kind of inner motivation is and the the reason why. Um, uh, well, actually, before I get that, I want to I, w I want to get into this chart a bit more just to give some background. So, yeah. you yeah. gave you get so you gave this um, you basically described it. We've got we've got three issues. Um, it could be more than that, but we've got race, climate change, and trans, and then we've got um, these traits. And then what what Schellenberger and Bogosian have done is taken each of these traits and then given examples of of um, each of these and how they apply within each uh, within each of these issues. So just as I'll just read some examples like attention seeking, you know, you've got the the activists who will. Um, you know, put uh, put black squares on their Instagram, or throw soup on paintings, or have meltdowns. Uh, you know, public meltdowns in response to, um, well, to to anything, and then, yeah. And so, so he does that, or they do that for for each of these, giving these examples. So it's basically like this template that seems it's like it's a, a template, and you can just um, you can you can just uh, superimpose the issue on top of it and come up with the same same shape, the same template for each of these, um, for, for any issue basically. And what the template is, is this kind of psychopathological, um, you know, worldview. And so that, that kind of relates to what you were saying. So just wherever that takes you, go, go with it. No, yeah. hundred percent. The, uh, the folks, uh, as you correctly said, um, uh, it's not strictly uh, psychopathic. Uh, you've got the his, his, his hysteric uh, hysteria. You've got the the uh, 
borderline, which is the female uh, psychopath, the same uh, brain uh, dysfunction coming out differently in, in the female. You've got uh, the hysterics, you've got the uh, new, neurotics, you've got the, the whole range, the narcissists, the malignant narcissists. Uh, so, yes, uh, um, I just want to add one 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 thing to to uh, to this is that this this is the, to, to stress that that this shows us how the folks whether they're uh, schizoids or uh, psychopaths or narcissists it also shows us how they think they've built mm -hmm. a world that they can understand. They have to. They 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 find our world fearful. They find our world hostile. They can't understand many of the laws. So by building this world, they're making they're forcing us to live in the world that they've built. And by forcing us, they into this, they're able to have power over us, and they're able, most importantly, to control us. And whether you're psychopathic or whether you're narcissistic, you want to control people because control is uh, is is, uh, is 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 something that they need, even though they cause chaos, so as to uh, confuse us, and so that they can control the chaos. So it doesn't necessarily mean that just because they're controlling us that we're going to see everything as uh, as as uh, as non chaotic. The chaos that they call cause is uh, deliberate, and it's deliberate. Just as when they uh, closed down COVID, and when certain people sold their uh, their 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 shares, whereas people who knew what was happening in COVID were able to buy when everybody was selling, when everybody thought that it was the end of the world, and uh, they were able to take an, uh, advantage of that. That's just one simple uh, uh, way in which they did that. Um, the... the um, the, the various issues that, that they, uh, if I can just talk, for example, uh, trans, and, and, and we can move on to some of the other ones. Uh, the trans issue uh, that, that they're forcing onto kids, whereas in the, in the UK and uh, in Europe, they've largely stopped, in, in not, not the whole of Europe, but in many, uh, uh, many places, uh, they've first stopped this type of uh, of of, opera of of the operations that are that have absolutely uh, destroyed so many uh, people's lives, and what we have here is we have situations where obviously there are trans people. Nobody's denying that there are trans people. Nobody's denying that there's climate change. Nobody does, is denying that there's racism. But if you're only able to have two options of 100% or 0%, so to speak, and you're only going to be able to say, well, 0% means that there's a genocide on, uh, on trans people if not every single person needs to go directly. Don't, you know, don't pass go. You know, it's, it's just you go directly to the hospital. There's very little uh, psychological uh, discussion. There's very little uh, uh, decision making uh, on, on behalf of parents. Uh, in California, uh, I don't know if to tell you folks, uh, it, it's just the laws here are, are probably uh, the, the worst in, in, in the world, I'm guessing, especially that, seeing that the world has stopped it and it, it's only America that's, uh, that's involved in this. But we have to also remember that just as uh, Douglas Murray uh, mentions in his brilliant book, uh, the, the, uh, the, the Crowds, Oh, uh, yeah. the madness, madness of crowds. Madness yeah. of crowds. Thank you, gentlemen. He says the gay rights, 
they got everything that they that they wanted. But what happened after that? Instead of saying wonderful and stopping at the station, yes, we're successful. They went right through the station and they didn't stop. And just as Jordan Peterson says, the left ne- the left never knows when to stop. And the reason that they don't know when to stop is because they have no ability to gauge things. They have no ability to do, they have no perspective, they have no context. I'm talking specifically about the pathological uh, folks on on the left. And that is why uh, apparently Jordan Peterson has said he's asked uh, people in Congress uh, on the left, uh, uh, when has the left gone too far? And nobody has been able to, to answer him. So we have the situation where parasites, the psychopathic, uh, the passive parasitic psychopaths who, ha- who have to hijack movements, they hijack Black Lives Matter. Yes, of course, all Black Lives Matter, all lives matter. But the Black Lives Matter movement was a, a, a fraud, as we've seen lately with regards to the financing and everything of it. Uh, they've, uh, they took the world uh, for, for a ride that uh, the rest of the world should never have gone on. England had no reason. They, never had, they were the first to get rid of slavery. Uh, they had no reason to, uh, to, uh, to, to do uh, what, uh, to take down statues like, like folks did in America, who, who, who also had no reason to do that, but more reason than, than in, in England. Um, so it's, uh, it's, ju- it's really important to remember that what we've got here are folks who literally cannot do what you or I have done in life by just having a job or doing things. So they have to hijack and they have to attach onto movements. And that is what they've done. And what we're living through today is folks who have hijacked, whether it's a climate movement or racism or trans or anything else, that is what we're living through today. And we need to see it in that uh, perspective so that we can uh, understand it and 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 be able to to fight back because if we get lost in the minutia then we're not going to be able to see this we have to look at this as a, as as dr ian mcgilchrist uh, would call it uh, the the right hemisphere the the whole view of it as opposed to the left view left hemisphere view which is certain of what it's doing but it's only able to see one degree of 360 or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we need to see it in that context, everything in that context. Otherwise, we'll, we'll, we'll be lost in translation. Well, I wanted to just say that reading um, the, the various descriptions of, of thought uh, or non-thought uh, in the psychopathology of, of wokeism taxonomy, uh, there are so many ideas that um, are emotionally driven. Uh, You spoke a moment ago about how there was no thinking involved with much of the decision-making that's concerned with people who are doing uh, um, uh, trans work on themselves, that that this has just been a kind of a a program that's been foisted upon the the public, that it's, you know, if, 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 for instance, a child has some sexual confusion at a very young age, boom, sex reassignment surgery and and whatever else they're doing um, to them. Uh, But getting back to this, there are statements that so brilliantly describe all of these various woke movements and and the psychology and and it, it's it's almost as though you're looking at the matrix program uh just reading a few here we must def- defund and abolish police and prisons we must radically alter the global economy and change our way of life 
you've stolen my childhood, exclamation mark. Um, would you rather have a trans son or a dead daughter? I mean, th these are all, uh, all thoughts and, and ideas that, um, that have come out of academia, that have come out of the media, that have come out of or are informed, uh, that, that inform the, the political policies of, of uh, much of uh, Western nations right now, that successfully bypass any rational thought. Um, they're, they're, like I was saying earlier, just an appeal to emotion. And uh, what's interesting to me is that having looked at this uh, on Schellenberger's uh, Twitter uh, thread, there, there were some individuals who were poo-pooing it that said, well, you'll never, you'll never change human nature. This is an unsuccessful effort at doing so. And I thought this guy or, or whoever it was that was tweeting completely missed the point um, because, you know, Schellenberger actually thanks Joshua Slocum, a friend to our show, uh, right. for, for his work. Uh, Slocum was able to see, in a, in, from his own personal perspective, how this type of uh, emotionally dysregulated thinking and grandiosity and all of these other traits through his experience with his mom could be um, could be used as a as a template for a macro social phenomena, uh, and it's helped him as an individual to be able to to see these things. Uh, so. Uh, there's that. And I, I wonder if you have anything that you wanted to comment I, on with those matters. I, absolutely. Yes, uh, uh, Josh has definitely uh, helped a lot of people see that. Uh, anyone who's dealt with uh, this type of situation uh, and can see that the one individual can be uh, scaled up to society can see the harm that uh, that can be uh, be brought to people, and and the trans issue is is we're going to be and we're going to be looking back at this, unfortunately, in ten years, and and saying that this was just absolutely uh, ghastly uh, that uh, we allowed uh, finance. What has happened apparently uh, is that the 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 the, uh, the gay movement apparently had a lot of money, and there were a lot of people involved in it because they had work to do, obviously. But once they succeeded, they apparently had to do something, and they morphed into uh, tr the the trans ideology. Uh, from my understanding, and and listen to a lot of people who who know about this, uh, that's apparently what happened. And today we now have a fortune of funding for this uh, ideology. Not and not only that, we have a fortune of of money that is invested in in uh, the medicalization of uh, th these kids. So we've got. Billions of dollars that's be, that, that are being invested in, in the medicalization. And we've also got tens of million, if, if not hundreds of million of, of dollars that have been, that, that is funding this propaganda because that's what it is essentially. Uh, coming back to what we've spoken about uh, on political ponderology, uh, and we, we, we see how this uh, ideology is able to be used as propaganda. It's the same Marxist propaganda. The, the destruction of the family is, is what we're looking at here with, with the trans ideology. And if anything uh, is going to be uh, get, is going to be able to get between a, a mother, a father, uh, between their, their son or daughter, it's an issue like this. And it's it's absolutely horrendous, especially when they've taken the the, uh, the parental rights away from from many parents ar around the country. And what we've seen uh, with this uh, 
it a uh, green acre i think in 1965 she wrote uh she wrote an, an article where she just des- described uh, and i know we not only is talking about uh, about uh, we talk about other uh, narcissists and and other uh, disorders here, but specifically with re- relating to uh, the the psychopathic individual, uh, she wrote about how uh, they're there there because of their once again the the lack of their core identity. They, uh, their, their sexuality was uh, was uh, something that uh, was a polymorphous. I think was the word. I'll think of it in a second. But uh, she wrote about this in in sixty five, and this is partly what we're looking at today. We're looking at we're looking at drag queen story hour, and we're looking at. Uh, the books in in schools that are uh, teaching young kids about uh, sexuality uh, who shouldn't be uh, uh, learning this until many years later. So the trans ideology is literally splitting up uh, uh, families and it is is causing incredible uh, emotional uh, harm to to, to the kids, let alone let alone physical uh, harm. Getting back to your your, your question about the, the various things that are on on the taxonomy, uh, we we have the 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 folks the acting out of uh, hatred. If I'm one of these folks, I have self hatred for myself. I'm going to be acting out my self hatred because. I am trying to get rid of one of the defenses essentially is is to react the uh the the uh hurt the disruption that I felt in childhood and by acting that out I'm hoping to heal that that uh, trauma but unfortunately there's no way to heal the trauma so all we see is this continuous acting out of various people. I mean, that's just that's just one of the reasons that they're that they're doing that. Um, obviously, they think that they're doing it for a higher cause that that, that they're uh, righteous, but uh, a lot of it is acting out so that they can they can. That's what the psychopath uh, it does. Uh, it, their whole life through involves in relationships, interaction with with different people, and it involves their attempt to get rid of the trauma that 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 uh, that they realize that they have undergone, but they have no uh, understanding. They have no ability, obviously, to uh, to uh, to do that. I want to come back to something you'd said earlier about the about splitting and the, the what zero or 100%. I hadn't thought about it, it this way before, but it's, uh, it, uh, the, the way it kind of plays out in the, in the, the grander narrative is here's the ideology or here. Yeah. Here's the ideology. Here's all the features of the ideology. And then it becomes a take it or leave it. Like you have to take it a hundred percent. And so if you disagree, even that 1% or 90% or 50%, any amount of disagreement is taken as a rejection of the whole and is, is, um, verboten. And so, yeah, yeah, I'd never, I'd never actually thought about it in those terms before, but it, it makes, it makes total sense. And it, and it ties into what Lobachevsky was saying about ideologies, because one of the things he said, and you'll get into this in a bit more detail, I'm sure, but he said that, um, um, ideologies don't need spellbinders. Spellbinders need ideologies, and he said that for a particular reason. But, <clears throat> but one of one of the aspects of that was that that the the people who become spellbinders for an ideology, <clears throat> these are the people that, um, uh, like like the ideologies, <clears throat> PR men, the people that um, that put it out for for mass consumption, that they do so with what he called. Con- relatively controlled egotism. So it's basically, 
um, I'm right. I have the answers. This is the, <clears throat> these are the problems. This is the solution. And when you combine that with splitting, with that, with that all or nothing attitude, that black or white attitude, it becomes, right. here is my picture. Like, here is my my ideology, my worldview on this issue, whether it's race, climate change, trans, or whatever. Right. Here's the picture. And then everyone must conform to it 100%. If they yes. don't, they're an enemy. And right. and it, the, the effect that it has, Lobachevsky says, is he calls it like um, thought terrorization. That yes. it's actually like the, the normal response to that is is actually because it it's it's outside the normal realm of discourse. It's there's something right. abnormal about it. We don't usually get in a situation where someone confronts right. us with like that, right. um, with with such a um, with such force and and vigor and certainty. So we're kind right. of like deer in the headlights when when we encounter that, and and it's nonstop because you can't engage with it because of the sp because of the splitting. So it's just oh well, what about this? No, 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 and and the it's this constant barrage to to conform to this one little simplified model. Right. Right. I mean, uh, Lebetsky's discussion of terror and, 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 and trauma is, is, is quite uh, fanta fantastic. And it, it, it really ties in. We're not going to get into this uh, today, but uh, the more primitive form of, of, projection, which is projective identification, uh, that involves a tremendous amount of, of, uh, of terror and terrorizing because basically you're not just projecting your thoughts onto somebody. You're literally projecting what you're trying to expel and you're actually trying to control them. And that's where the terror and the feeling comes in and comes in. Um, but, but yes, it's so important to remember that the folks who we're dealing with, the folks who are in power, who are making the laws, they have no ability to understand uh, to, 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 to understand the, 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 the way of, 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 of any perspective, of any context. Nuance is so important in our life. And they have zero ability to appreciate nuance. That's why it's always zero or a hundred. Uh, living in a world where there's no nuance is a world where you are locked in. It's the world of the left hemisphere. It's the world where you can only see such a small, tiny little portion. It's a world where you're so certain of yourself. You're so certain of what you think because all you can see is that tiny little speck compared to the whole uh, 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 rest of the world. It's a world where there's no metaphor. It's a world where there's no context. Can you imagine living in a world where there is no context? You can't do it reason if you have no context. So it's, it's a world that is absolutely pathological, and it's a world that 50 years ago we didn't have, because 50 years ago you could you could discuss, even 25 years ago, 30 years ago, you could discuss across the aisle in, 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 in American politics. Today there's no ability to, to discuss uh, as there was just 30 years ago. So we've literally uh, been forced into this world that they need to live in because they cannot live in the in the wider uh, context of a uh, right hemisphere uh, world. So, yes, that is quite true, unfortunately. Well, I, I wanted to comment on what Harrison uh, just said and then tie it in with what you just said, David, because... Uh, you know, you have these these ready-made programs and ideas about what defending a you know climate change or uh, the trans movement or any one of these other woke ideologies is going to look and sound like. Um, and it occurs to me that once you've uh, once you've adapted your thinking or non-thinking to one of these ideologies, you've already made yourself more vulnerable 
to <clears throat> any of these other ones. It's almost like a like a package deal. And the implication is, you know, well, if you're progressive and a good human being and, and liberal or whatever other idea that's going to make you feel good about adopting one of these ideologies, then therefore it must follow that you would also uh, believe in some of these other woke ideologies and and be vociferous uh, defenders and, it's a package and deal. argue. Yes, it, it comes all together. And if you've adapted all of these then you you must be in support of uh, the West's support of Ukraine against Russia, because look, we we have this trans representative in the military talking, and and trans means woke, and woke is good, and and that must mean that Ukraine has freedom of you know and and democracy, Western style. So it it is such a an insidio- insidious <laughs> kind of. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, in scope um, and and speaks to just how uh, on, on some level thought out all of this cultural Marxism, all of these policies are on a on, on a on a really uh, almost unfathomable scale. It, I mean, yes, you you might have some. You know, you spoke about the the hijacking of of some of these grassroots movements, but. Uh, it it is the it is the total kind of uh, inversion of anything that may have ever been positive about any of these progressive ideas, um, right. and lumping them together, and enforcing them on the public, and and being used as we as we've said previously on the show, um, weaponized towards geopolitical ends. Even it, it's remarkable. Yeah. Yeah, just two uh, of the very important things that you said there. Non-thought. P.C. Rakamir, in a brilliant article uh, years ago, uh, 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 the article was called, I believe, On Narcissism. He discusses the non-thought of of the psychopathic person. And it, it, it it, it, it is quite something to read, actually, because essentially... Uh, what they tr- what they're trying to do is to control your thought. So it's imperative to appreciate, as you've spoken before, that what we're living through today is propaganda, Marxist style, just like uh, Lobachevsky, I believe, or similar to what he he, he uh, lived through. Obviously, it was a lot worse in his time, but today. We've had our schools, we've had our universities, we've had every everybody because of this woke ideology. Uh, woke ideology is essentially an ideology that was invented to to take over, to basically uh, say we don't have to think. We're just putting this together so that it fits and the. We don't have to think about anything because you have to r- r- appreciate that the folks that we're dealing with have tremendous difficulty thinking logically. That's why we're in, a, in the world that we're living today, because they cannot think logically. And what they do is they need to live in a sort of taxonomy so that they don't, just as you said, uh, they don't have to think. They just fit in there and fit in there. If if I think uh, if if I think that uh, you know that uh, America is uh, uh, land that has been stolen, uh, you know they're next for colonization. Uh, if any place uh, is uh, in in the world has uh, has been. Uh, has taken land, is, is thought of as taken land. Uh, it's the same reason, the same logic, uh, the same re- logic that, that DEI, uh, which stands for, once again, the opposite, the inversion of, 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 of every, everything it claims to be. And what we also need to appreciate is something that uh, 
uh, what, what you said that Dr. Ian McGillchrist uses a Max Scheller uh, who writes uh, brilliantly about values and talks about how we have inverted values today. Instead of having the holy on the top, we've got utility on the top. So basically what we've got is people, not only uh, psychopaths, but many uh, schizoids, schizophrenics that uh, uh, Dr. McGilkes talks about, and I, I, I know uh, Jesse also talks about, we've got all of these people who are essentially running things because power goes, people in power have to be on top because they're incompetent, so they have to be telling people what to do because they themselves cannot do the things. So, so yes, it, it, it's, um, it's not a pretty sight, and we, we need to appreciate this, otherwise we're going to be confused because confusion and despair is, is, the, uh, is the psychopathic... Uh, is where psychopaths want us to be because if we're confused, we... We cannot work through the issues of of trying to uh, claw ourselves back uh, from the cliff that we're hang hanging, uh, currently hanging uh, onto. So I want to go over the worldview because you mentioned earlier that that um, they basically. The, like this sort of person doesn't doesn't fit in the world very well um, because the the normal the normal worldview doesn't work for them because they're 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 lacking certain things that that make the world work the worldview work for normal people. So right. I want to take a look at this this worldview that's that they've constructed for themselves and for yeah. others um, right. by by just kind of I'll, I'll I'll list these these features again just with the expanded versions that um, that. Bogosian and, and Schellenberger give. So this is, I, I'd call this kind of a, a, a basic general psychopathological worldview. So we'll start with, uh, so attention seeking, which is demanding excess recognition, grandiosity, an exaggerated sense that you're owed a great deal, emotional dysregulation, dramatic and erratic, excess of empathy for those designated victims, um, then there's the victimhood ideology, celebrating the status of being oppressed, um, impaired reality testing, disinterest in or hostility to evidence, lack of empathy for those designated oppressors, and splitting, seeing things in black and white. So this is a description of the way that the that various individuals with various types of psychopathology, whether to use Lobachevsky's phrases, whether it's inherited or acquired, whether it's from brain damage or the influence of a, a pathological parent. And, um, but, but in that case, only a certain number are susceptible to that kind of influence and end up like their parents. But this is kind of the worldview. So it's a very self-centered, egotistic, narcissistic worldview. Um, as we, like emotionally, it's dramatic and erratic. The there's the the emotions are all over the place. Um, the empathy is kind of tweaked so that um, there's an there's almost an, an exaggerated sense of empathy for the oppressed in group, um, and not not necessarily even the in group, just the 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 superior group because you may not be in the in group, but um, but if uh, if you're not, then you're supposed to have excessive empathy for for that group but then a total right. lack of empathy for the the enemy group oh. for the the those designated the oppressors um there's a, a cognitive dysfunction going on here with a, a kind of inability to or uh, disinterest in or hostility to evidence this relates to what lobachevsky is talking about um as conversive thinking so these th thought processes where um that where evidence that that should be like emotionally valent as as being relevant to the truth kind of gets shunted off through these mental pathways and to to be totally ignored it's like here's here's the here's the picture that i that i have and if there's anything that contradicts that picture it just bounces right off it or 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 comes in and gets expelled really quickly and of course it's this black and white worldview so this is the worldview that that these individuals have it's the way they see the world it's the way they've constructed the world and it's a way that makes sense because that's that's kind of um, that's the way they see themselves. That's the way that's the way they are in the world, and that worldview then gets projected onto others in a in a forceful 
um, forceful and egotistic manner. So this is the way it is, and you must agree with it. You must conform to this way of looking at things. Otherwise, you get put in that group of the oppressors and for, for whom there's no empathy. And right. so Lobachevsky, when he's writing about it, he was writing about it in terms of strict like Leninism, uh, Marxism in the, the context of like Soviet communism. And now, but now we're seeing a newish ideology with these issues like climate change, race and, and trans issues, but those aren't the only ones. So we're seeing the same template in a, in a new, in new clothes, basically a new ideological garment. Um, yeah. So do, do you have any comments on that? Any thoughts on that? Especially about, I, I want to kind of get into that idea of this is the world that they've constructed for themselves because it's the only world that makes sense. Um, but wherever you want to go yes. with that. Yes. Well, just uh, firstly, the, the demanding that they uh, are doing is uh, totally pathological and that is psychopathic. The, uh, the forcing of uh, us into this world, that I'll come to in a second, but also uh, the, the fact that they are so over-dramatic, uh, that shows the infantile behavior that, 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 that they're stuck in the infantile uh, stage, and the more dramatic they are, the more it shows this infantile uh, behavior. Uh, the petulant behavior that we're seeing is this path pathological uh, uh, behavior. But the, the, the people that we're talking about uh, is, are essentially... Uh, they see the world as a hostile place. And when you see the world as a hostile place, you see the world as, as a fearful place. And you see the world as a world that you cannot trust. And if I cannot trust the world, then I'm not going to be able to trust you. And because I can't trust you, I'm going to have to be able to treat you in a different way, in a way that uh, is perhaps infantile because I can't trust myself. I therefore can't trust the people I'm dealing with. And this is a major problem in politics because we find many people who cannot trust themselves and therefore they can't trust the people that they've got to uh, uh, got, got to. Uh, Reliable. So, right. what do you what do you mean what do you mean by they can't trust themselves? Like, what does that look like? Okay, so if if I cannot if if I'm a malignant narcissist psychopathic, if I ca if if I cannot trust myself, it's it it's because I don't have a sense of a core whole sense of self. And the, the not trusting myself comes out in, in psychopathic behavior. You always have betrayal because if you deal, have dealt with a psychopath, you are going to be, be, be betrayed. Every person who has dealt with a psychopath has been betrayed. Uh, and it's partly because of their uh, malignant uh, behavior but it's also uh, partly due to the fact that that uh, trust is is something that is is uh, is, uh, is is not under understood uh, by, by them. The worldview that's been created today is uh, is pathological because for a number of reasons, and and one of them is 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 the lack of trust. But that's just one one of many of, of, of the, re the reasons. The world that they've created, as we spoke about earlier, is a world that they can fit into and the world that they can understand. Because believe it or not, they don't understand many of the laws that have been uh, 
uh, made, and that partly because the the laws are made so we can live in a, in in a, in, a, in society. Uh, they unfortunately uh, find laws uh, to be uh, an, an, anathemic, and uh, 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 that's that's why the criminal element uh, and the fraudulent uh, scams uh, that 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 they pull off, even if they are, are don't end up in uh, in, in prison. Uh, Criminality to them is something that is innate, and it's part of the reason that we have such so much corruption uh, today all around the world, whether it's in uh, America or Africa or wherever. There's uh, tremendous corruption, and they've built a world that they are now funneling money to themselves, and the rest of the populace uh, be damned. Unfortunately. Well, I, I just want to comment on a couple of things you said there because <clears throat> uh, it sounded to me, uh, David, that what you were saying was, you know, when, when a, let's say, a leader uh, who happens to be psychopathic or who uh, has no, uh, no character or integrity or is unable to follow through on a promise or an agreement or uh, act in good faith. Um, then there was there would be a tendency on on that said leader's part to project those same sensibilities, those same values or lack of values onto the 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 other the 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 other leader, the uh, the person that that one is making motions to to uh, come together with on on some agreement. Right. But at the same time, I sometimes think that these psychopathic leaders. Uh, they don't, it's not necessarily that they don't think that the other party is trustworthy. It's that their, their, um, overriding, uh, mission is to induce fear and paranoia among the, the, the populace for, for support yeah. precisely because they know that the other party is is a agreeable and, and acting in integrity, but they still want to screw them over anyway. Right. Um, and that may not even be so conscious, a, an insight. Um, but they, you know, some of these income poops in, in Washington have to know that, that, you know, just for an example, that there are, that there are leaders in the East, for instance, that are capable to some great, uh, extent or another, just to take this as a, a geopolitical example, and but just don't want to have that kind of relationship. <laughs> they, 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 there's something, um, you know, there, there's something wrong about uh, an, a clean and honest exchange of and compromise and an agreement. Well, before before you respond, David, I want I want to say something. So. This might be an example of, of what David was talking about, about the, the disintegrative like personality structure of this type of individual, because on the one hand, like you'll, many of the writers on psychopathy will say that psychopaths see everyone else or they, they assume that everyone else is like them. That's this, this projective right. element of it. So I'm untrustworthy, therefore everyone else is. But on the other hand, they 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 seem they have a disdain for normal people that aren't like them so it's it's this weird kind of schizophrenic attitude where they have two yes. kind of conflicting beliefs one that everyone's right. like them and one that the people that aren't like them are are weak um weak silly little things that deserve it so so on the one hand they they probably are thinking um, oh well, I'm going to screw them over because they'd screw screw over me. And when they don't, right. sc when they when the 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 victim doesn't screw them over, it's like, well, he 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 should have, right? He's just therefore he deserves it. It's like uh, have they get to have their cake and eat it too? Because if if they do one thing, then then they're correct. And if they well, if they if they end up screwing them over, then it's like, yeah, that's just the way that, the way it is. Um, at, or if they attempt to do that, and if they don't, well, then they're just weak. So they. Yeah, they get they get to have it both ways, basically, and lack the insight to reconcile those contradictory right. yeah, uh, thought processes. Yeah, they don't even recognize the contradiction. 
Have, well, lack of insight, as Herbie Clackley says, is a more severe in, in uh, psychopathy than it is in schizophrenia. So think about that for a second. It's pretty uh, hectic in uh, schizophrenia, but Herbie Clackley says that it is, it is worse in the psychopath. And that's because the, the, the insight is uh, brought about uh, in life. You and I uh, become uh, insightful by experiencing different things. And unfortunately, the psychopath uh, is unable to learn from experience. And because of that uh, de deficiency, an inability to learn from experience, that is one of the main reasons why they lack insight. Um, getting back to the having your cake and eating it, uh, that is the uh, sole, uh, uh, the, 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 the purpose of the psychopath in life, in every single instance. Uh, and, and yes, their schizophrenic thinking uh, whatever they uh, need to do uh, to get their own way, uh, they, they, will, they will do. Uh, thinking that we are the same as everybody else in society is one of our biggest problems. Because as Labateski says, it, uh, it, it does not allow us uh, to entertain the thought that there might be other people who are different from us who could want to do us in and the psychopath takes advantage of that on a daily basis because they know that we think that they are just like us because they are sheep in in uh wolves and they sheep's are clothing sheep in wolves clothing just as 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 uh Rob, Rob Hare and, and Babiak uh, have written about uh, they are imposters and they are in every single level of government and in society where the doctors, lawyers, the, the army, uh, and we, we've seen that. We've seen that during COVID. We've, we've seen how folks who had just a little bit of uh, bureaucratic uh, power, uh, what they, that they did and what they were able to do, and we've seen this, unfortunately, uh, in in in, uh, in 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 how uh, bureaucracies and big governments have have turned their attention from unfortunate from outside uh, uh, from from uh, seeing that we're safe from outside uh, forces, uh, our enemies. And what they've done is they've now turned that inside and are using that uh, against the people. And uh, if anything, when they cry lack of democracy, lack of democracy, uh, you need to uh, be certain that they're taking your rights away as they, uh, the more they scream, lack of democracy, the more rights they're taking away, and the more powers they are trying to influence uh, you with. So, yes, that is something that we're, we're, we are dealing with today, and we need to be aware of it so that we can push back, because if we are un unable to push back against the various forces that uh, are insisting on taking our rights away. Uh, because remember, psychopaths do not believe that other people have any rights to anything. And only they have rights. The populace have zero rights. Uh, and we're seeing that today, unfortunately, uh, in, in as, as clear as daylight. The, the saddest thing is that, um, and this is something else we've said on the show previously, is that the individuals who succumb to 
these ideologies who become the ground forces the the you know the the vocal opponents of um uh any more traditional values are usually the ones to suffer first and foremost and pay dearly for their um falling for these ideas um because naivete and, naivete and uh, uh, you know, lack of, uh, I mean, we're all working on ourselves. We're, we're all working on becoming more integrated, hopefully, and, and developing a sense of self. I think there was another term you used earlier on, um, uh, individuated and, and, and whatnot. It's just that um, they are the utterly, you know, disposable, uh you know the the Useful group of idiots, people they call you, them. yes mm -hmm. yes well and this relates to to well I'm, I'm looking at a meme right now maybe i'll use it in the screenshot but it's a it's a drawing of a bunch of people lined up against the wall with their hands tied behind their back and one of them is uh has you know dyed purple hair <clears throat> and uh you know got the hammer and sickle tattooed and uh she's she or he, you know, because it's hard to tell which is is uh, turning around, looking at the 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 uniformed guard behind her, you know, presumably waiting for the execution squad, and uh, and she's saying, "Excuse me, comrade, when do we get the free healthcare?" <laughs> and <laughs> and this is something that uh, that is is a recurring theme in in Ponderology when when he's talking about the the progression of. Um, the progression of ponderogenesis, as he as he puts it, so the different stages that that uh, a group and a nation will go through as these these uh, as pathocracy develops, and so it is the uh, you know it well I'll, I'll just give a, a summary view of it is that it basically the the way he lays it out it starts out with the ideology which is usually usually written by um, a, a schizoid type individual so it's kind of like an oversimplified maybe hyper rational but not doesn't really test to reality very well um, picture of the the problem and the solution. And then that gets adopted by what he calls um, characteropaths and spellbinders who then take that ideology and kind of tweak it a little bit. They, they operationalize it for mass consumption and popularization and, um, and brutalize it a bit. So it becomes a little bit more extreme, a little bit more radical. And, um, and that's the, that's by, by taking that, that ideology, which has a real issue at the core of it, usually, and by kind of giving it a little bit of spice, it then becomes marketable to a wider percentage of the population. Oh. And then that, that group then, which can be characterized as, as psychopathological, and I think that, that the Schellenberger and Boghossian taxonomy can apply to that, it then undergoes even more deformation and transformation once the psychopaths get involved. And once the psychopaths have kind of gotten their grip on it and sunk their teeth into it, it becomes what he calls like a complete caricature of the ideology, where the words are the same. So you mentioned this in, in regard to DEI, so right. d diversity, right. you know, uh, equality and inclusion, right. where those yeah. words come to mean their exact opposites, but they still right. use the still use the words. Right. And once the psychopaths are in charge and have taken over, it's the true believers that get lined up against, you know, for the execution squads. Right. And and uh, so even for the people, even for the the kind of extreme, emotionally dysregulated people that adopt the ideology and become its its foot soldiers, they're the ones that are often the the first and the first and maybe the worst, maybe not victims of the of their of their own ideology, ostensibly. Yes, unfortunately, whether they schizoid, schizophrenics, or psychopaths, or just plain vanilla narcissists, uh, they're unable to, to 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 see that they are the the useful idiots, as we said, the the uh, the folks, the the the, the stormtroopers. Uh, it's important to to remember that. These folks who are very uh, left hemispheres unfortunately have a greater voice than the folks who are right hemispheres. The brain 
even though both sides, left hemisphere and right hemisphere, uh, are, are uh, involved in, in, in talking, it's unfortunately the left hemisphere that has a louder voice, and that's why they're able to do what they do. Uh, Dr. McGilchrist actually says that at, at times that the right hemisphere doesn't have a voice. If I'm quoting him correctly, I believe mm -hmm. I am. It obviously has a voice, but what he means by that is that the left hemisphere is, I'm not giving, he's not giving numbers, but it's almost 90 10, it sounds like. And when you understand that we need the right hemisphere, people on the right hemisphere, we, we need to stand up and even though we don't have a voice, we need to stand up. And because we know that our voice is less innately and, and structurally, hemispherically, uh, we need to stand up and talk and we need to shout as loud or louder than the folks who are uh, on, on, on the streets, uh, who are uh, attesting to the fact that they have the truth. It's very important to say that the right hemisphere has a much more veridical view of reality and of the truth than does the left hemisphere. And even though the left hemisphere is able to pretend that it is they who have the veridical truth and, and are able to see reality, it is not the case. It is the right hemisphere. And that point with regards to reality and truth uh, is, 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 is the reason why we're seeing today uh, a truth that has been inverted and reality that has been inverted and everything essentially has been inverted because when you start from the point of view of propagandizing everything you are going to not be talking uh, truth and your truth is going to be much uh, less uh, veridical as is your reality do you, do you get the sense that, um, well, so the events over the past several years have been uh, kind of jarring and shocking to many of us and, uh, and, and also so forceful in some ways um, that I, I think among the more, uh, um, well, I'll, I'll, leave that descriptor out of it but do you ever get the sense that that because of the intensity and the and the bizarreness uh on some level of of all of this uh wokeism and and the policies connected to it <clears throat> that there is a certain measure of um more right uh brained or hemisphered individuals or at least balanced individuals uh just kind of taking the time to gather you know get their bearings and and uh uh assimilate uh, an understanding for themselves about what it is they're actually witnessing and and know that they have to be that there's a a measure of of um circumspection or uh or um cautiousness that has to be exercised in order to uh, take the the moment and seize the day, or um, or or say the right thing at the right time. That um, and that there is a. I mean, we're we're looking right now at, for instance, uh, it's kind of connected to this. You know, the the truckers um, uh, in Canada against COVID, in Brussels, in France, uh, in in Poland, and and other places, uh, yeah, I mean, taking to the streets. And, um, I mean, it took a while, <laughs> but they're doing it yeah. yes. and they're drawing a lot of attention to themselves, even if it, it's not being covered, 
right. fairly or accurately in the mainstream yeah. press. Um, so I, I wonder if if there's just this kind of pro process that most uh, healthy individuals have to undergo if they haven't already been uh, traumatized to a degree where they're they're scared shitless about the world that they now live right. in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what what we're living through is basically what somebody who's gone through a, a, a psychopathic trauma has gone through. And when you've gone through a, a psychopathic relationship, uh, most people who have gone through them uh, realize that it's, 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 it's a mind F that you've gone through, basically, because you have been intentionally confused and you've been intentionally brought down into despair and you've been attacked, your mind is being attacked, and our mind is being attacked and has been attacked for, for, for decades now. So what we're looking at, essentially, are people who don't know what they've gone through, but they know that what they've gone through is something that is not right. And if you don't have the the world, uh, the right hemisphere uh, view of what we're going through, and if you don't have books like uh, Lobachowski, and if you don't have books like uh, uh, Dr. Ian McGilchrist's book about the, the hemispheres, uh, then you, you really don't have uh, an explanation and that's what they want you to do. Fear is something that uh, uh, the powers that be want uh, uh, the folks at the bottom to feel. Because if you feel if you're fearful, we saw during COVID exactly what happens if you're fearful. If you're fearful, you're, you're a large percentage of the population are prepared to give up their liberty. And what uh, we're seeing now in Germany and in Holland and in all over you know, a number of places in Europe, with regards to the uh, the, the food crisis that uh, that they're trying to get rid of a certain amount of of uh, chemicals here and carbon dioxide there, uh, what they're trying to do. Uh, taking away land from farmers who have farmed for generations. And in uh, Holland, uh, especially, uh, a small country that produces an extraordinary amount of, of food, uh, yes, uh, as you say, they, they are standing up, uh, but... Uh, they they need our help, and uh, we need to stand up and and support. Just as I know, a lot of people supported the trackers in 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 Canada, uh, because what they faced with regards to the uh, closing of their bank accounts and everything is just one of 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 uh, a number of measures that can be taken to. Uh, close down society and as we get less away from uh, a cashless get to a cashless society unfortunately uh the powers that be are going to have the ability uh to do that and it's it's something that we need to uh protect uh, against uh, because otherwise uh once once they've done that uh your your liberties are, ha, have essentially been uh, taken a, a, away from you. Well, I, I want to I want to get your thought on this because we've talked about the ideologies and how the the world that's constructed, you know, according to this taxonomy and just what we see in the world, is that an oversimplified oversimplified world. Yes. And so the way I would put that is that it's a it's a party platform that you can uh, put in a pamphlet and gain converts on. I mean, you right. could uh, you could give a short summary for it. You can even just make a slogan, and a slogan is even enough to to convert some people. So you've got this really oversimplified vision of reality. Whereas if we look at like um, 
at the the alternate worldview that is that has more detail and more nuance, like uh, let's say McGilchrist, it would be right. like com comparing a a pamphlet to McGilchrist's The Matter of Things, right? Which is this massive two volume book. Right. So, so in what do you think is the way um, the way of getting this across to people that doesn't suffer from well that can that can open people up to th that uh, that bigger picture but but it, it seems to be a picture that can't be propagandized because the the uh, to propagandize it would be to, to oversimplify it and not and not give the full picture so how do you how do you see the like how do you see it changing minds and making a difference well that's the uh, the, the the six uh, the six uh, billion dollar question uh, is it not um, but the, the, the only way to do it, uh, I guess, is, is to, uh, have a lot of, a number of people like, like you, you, you guys and like Josh and like a whole more bunch of, of people on, on Substack and people on podcasts who are able to bring this side to, to, to everybody. Uh, the only way this is going to happen is when people realize that the mainstream media is uh, an, an enemy of the people because they there is no truth there. You either have truth on one side or the other side. Both sides cannot be telling the truth. And as I just said earlier, McGilchrist tells us very clearly that it is the right hemisphere that is telling the truth. And he doesn't say this, but I'm saying it. It's the right and not the left, because the left is, coincidentally, the left hemisphere, and the right sees the larger picture of the right hemisphere. You've got the left taking us down a narrow, bureaucratic, controlled, contrived uh, view of the world, uh, just a little pamphlet, whereas the world consists of millions of pages. Uh, one ha has to try and tell people uh, and... and uh, about uh, your uh, new edition of Political Panerology, tell people of Dr. McGilchrist's books, uh, starting obviously with the, 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 the shorter book, which is only one volume, uh, The Mass and, and, and uh, His Emissary, uh, because essentially uh, what we're looking at today is just a, 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 a replaying out of history, but a few centuries down the line compared to what the Greeks or the Romans went through. And uh, unfortunately, um, it's easy to, 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 to think that, well, things will just carry on the same and they'll be okay. But unfortunately, history has shown that uh, it doesn't take too much to actually... Uh, take down a, a, a very secure uh, society. And unless we're able to put that message out, either through many substacks or many podcasts, um, we have to get that out and we have to stop mainstream media from their propagandizing because what they've done to a generation of, of children, they've taught them uh, that climate, that the world is going to end because what because of what we've done to the climate. They've taught us that colonial, we've colonized everything and that uh, America is bad as everything else, uh, any other country, uh, that uh, the... the uh, the colonization that has come from 
uh, the the Algeria France analogy is is the same as everything else because similar things are the same to these people they are they're able to take one thing and just plot it against another thing and what they're seeing what we've taught people today at schools and universities uh is 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 to be anti uh freedom and it's it's basically uh the the marxification of 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 children and they they have come out now with that the the hatred uh of america and that that, that hatred uh is a deliberate hatred that was now seen from the universities with the various uh university presidents uh who have been on show in congress and we've seen what they have been teaching uh our, our children and we have to somehow i don't know how but we have to somehow deprogram them because somehow we have to uh let them see that it is worth do- putting in a lot of work it's worth standing up for uh america and it's worth uh fighting for freedom because freedoms are, are not something that uh are going to be there all the time you just have to look all around the world and uh we can see what what have, what's happened in in many places where freedom has been uh uh taken from from folks well david unless you have any final thoughts i think that's a that might be a good place to end it did you have anywhere else you wanted to go or anything you wanted to add uh no i think that's pretty much it uh so thank you for the opportunity to go through this uh very important i think uh taxonomy great well thanks for having uh, th- thanks for coming on david it was great having you on here yes Thanks again.